give the floor to His Excellency Odo Tevi, Chair of the Delegation of Vanuatu. Mr. President, Mr. Secretary General, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, I have the great honor to deliver this address on behalf of the government and people of the Republic of Vanuatu. Mr. President, at the outset, let me sincerely congratulate you on your well-deserved election as President of the 78th session of this August Assembly. I assure you of the full support and cooperation of the Vanuatu delegation during your tenure. I commend your predecessor, His Excellency Saba Korosi, for the many remarkable achievements of the General Assembly under his leadership during challenging times. May I also congratulate the Secretary General, Mr. Antonio Guterres, for his determined and skillful leadership of the United Nations to promote peace, security, and development. I would like to extend Vanuatu's sincere condolence to the government and people of Morocco and Libya who, have affected, who were affected by the devastating earthquake and floods. Vanuatu stands in solidarity with both countries during these difficult times. Mr. President, we are meeting at a time of unprecedented global crisis and uncertainty. We are failing to address the triple planetary crisis of climate change, biodiversity loss, and pollution. We are hurtling from one emergency to the next, unable to address global shocks from the new technologies, pandemics, rapidly changing economies, and accelerating poverty and inequalities. We are putting the existence of future generations at risk. The world is standing at a historical crossroad. Geopolitical tensions are exacerbating the global challenges of our time. The world is apparently facing with multipolarization and conflicting interests from major powers. Lack of trust amongst the major powers is weakening the foundation of multilateralism. These challenges are global in nature and therefore require deepened international cooperation to resolve them. Our respect and adherence to the international rule of law is a necessity. The UN Charter is no exception. We need a renewed commitment on multilateralism with the United Nations at its core. We welcome the UN Secretary General's Our Common Agenda for Peace, an initiative we see as a transformative tool for effective multilateralism. Vanuatu welcomes the team for the 78th session, rebuilding trust and reigniting global solidarity, accelerating action on the 2030 agenda and its sustainable development goals towards peace, prosperity, progress, and sustainability for all, relevant to address the current global challenges and to accelerate the implementation of the 2030 agenda. Mr. President, despite the changing international environment, the United Nations has proven that it can be strong when the will of its members are harnessed for positive collective action. The most recent successful BBNJ agreement, the breakthrough in loss and damage funding at COP27, the successful Pacific Islands Forum ICJ advisory opinion resolution initiated by Vanuatu and the global agreement on biodiversity, a notable testament of effective multilateralism. The guiding principles of these extraordinary institutions are the promotion of international peace and security, development and human rights, and the eradication of poverty. Latest in a chain of events challenging these principles is the Ukraine conflict. The danger of escalation of the war in Ukraine further justifies Fonotus' resolute calls for a nuclear-free war and a universal arms trade treaty, which are necessary measures to prevent global human disasters in this regard, we must find a quick means to reach consensus in nuclear non-proliferation. We can find comfort in initiatives such as the UNHCR's 
SGs, a new agenda for peace, a tool that offers us a uni unifying vi vision anchored in trust, universality, and solidarity. It can help us address all forms and domains of threat from the prevention, peacemaking, and peacekeeping to peace building and sustainable development. I remain firmly convinced that the challenge that challenges that have come so sharply into focus in recent years and months emphasized the call by Vanuatu and many other member states for the reform of the UN Security Council and other UN agencies. This reform is overdue and is critical to reflect today's global realities. Mr. President, we are halfway through the implementation of the 2030 Agenda with worrying lack of progress. Decades of development gains have been undermined and in some cases refaced by COVID-19, climate change and rising inflation threatening the success of the 2030 Agenda. Mr. President, in its accelerated development path, Fanuatu leads a holistic and transformative approach focusing on economic, social and environmental development, national well-being indicators, as well as building a peaceful society based on democratic institutions and human rights. Putting the SDG agenda into action is not merely a government priority. It is an inclusive national undertaking across all state institutions, including the civil society. In the lead up to the 20, 2030 deadline, the Vanuatu government this year convened a six day national summit of the people from 25 to 30 July 2023, where all stakeholders, including academia, corporate, youth leaders, and civil society representatives, across Vanuatu revisited and committed their efforts to implementing the People's Plan 2030, Vanuatu's development roadmap. Mr. President, as we renew efforts to double down on our commitments to the 2030 agenda, we must acknowledge that the climate change is the defining existential challenge of our time and has proven to set back decades of development progress. While our countries are the smallest contributors to global climate change, we find ourselves on the front line of, this, of the crisis. On March this year, tropical cyclone Chudi hit the archipelago, archipelago of Vanuatu, followed by tropical cyclone Kevin just two days later. The twin cyclones affected about 60% of the total population. Assessment est est estimated the total effects amount to around 43% of GDP and the total recovery needs were estimated to, to be around 70% of GDP. Leading into COP28, we once again emphasized the absolute imperative of limiting global warming to 1.5 degrees above pre-industrial levels. Global efforts in this regard remain woefully inadequate as reflected in the recent IPCC sixth assessment report. This report confirms that we are dangerous dangerously close to overshooting the 1.5 degree limitation goal. Drastic actions are required in this critical decade to cost correct. We need to not only fulfill the commitments that we have already made, but also increase ambition to close the mitigation gap in line with the available science. Not addressing it is a death sentence to small states like Vanuatu. Given the existential threat imposed by climate change, Vanuatu, together with a core group of 18 countries, took the resolution seeking an advisory opinion on climate change from the International Court of Justice to the General Assembly, which was adopted by consensus on March, 2020, March 29, 2023. To date, states and intergovernmental organizations, such as, such as the IUCN and the EU, have received permission from the ICJ to provide submissions to the court. This is a unique opportunity in our history, and I encourage member states to prepare and present their submissions and make representations at the ICJ. While Vanuatu acknowledges the critical role of the Paris Agreement to affect climate change, Vanuatu believes that this agreement does not go far enough to address the current increase in fossil fuel production. As a consequence, in May this year, Vanuatu hosted the fifth Pacific Regional Energy and Transport Ministers meeting and culminated in the Portfila call to action, which aims at a just and equitable transition towards a fossil fuel free Pacific. Together with Tuvalu, we are leading a call for the establishment of a global alliance to negotiate a non-proliferation treaty to facilitate ending fossil fuel expansion 
equitable phase out of fossil fuels, and global just transition to renewable energy. Mr. President, reliable data has indicated that the Pacific Seeds has only received 0.22% of the global climate funds. This is quite remarkable given that we face the gra gravest threat from the impacts of climate change. The provision of sufficient predictable financing for implementing climate change adaptation and mitigation remains a significant gap. With the support from the development partners, we are doing our pa part to start construction of climate resilient infrastructure and projects promoting sustainable resource management to assist mitigation and adaptation work. However, more support and investments are required. I wish to reiterate that climate finance must be separate and scale up and be in addition to development finance. Both are critical to meet the development challenges we face. The promised 100 billion climate finance must also be fully delivered, providing climate vulnerable countries like Vanuatu much needed funds for adaptation and mitigation. As we approach the midpoint of the 2030 agenda and the sustainable development goals and the global stock take of the Paris Agreement, progress reco recorded so far is very worrying. We therefore cannot overemphasize the agency of accelerating implementation of the Sendai framework as an integral part of the 2030 agenda. We acknowledge and applaud the Secretary General's call to protect everyone on Earth through universal coverage of early warning systems. We are delighted to see that some Pacific Island countries are included in the Secretary General's projects on early warning system. Vanuatu has undertaken the following measures, among others, to strengthen disaster risk management in the context of the climate change discourse. One, the new Disaster Risk Management Act, a tool that is built around pre preparing for and responding to disasters at the national, provincial, and local level. And secondly, a national sub land subdivision policy that takes a more comprehensive approach to risk reduction and climate adapt adaptation for land development across Vanuatu. Vanuatu's experience with cascading natural disasters has promoted the need to incorporate disaster risk reduction in developing planning to ensure that national development framework is risk informed. We have come to realize that DRR must be mainstreamed into the SDGs to ensure effective implementation and resilience. Mr. President, COVID-19 has exceeded considerable fiscal pressures on our country's economy. The tourism industry was hard hit, losing approximately 9.1% 9 9 of revenues. Significant GDP contractions led to large fiscal deficits, leading us to maintain temporary fiscal measures, such as tax cuts, tax cuts and other spending, supporting response to the pandemic. These temporary support measures come at the expense of building fiscal buffers to withstand against fiscal shocks. We need to strengthen regional and international cooperation, global solidarity, coordination and governance at the highest levels through a multi-sectoral approach to development, prepare for and respond to pandemics and other health emergencies in the future, particularly in developing countries. Mr. President, besides the inherent natural disasters that, Vanuatu, that affect Vanuatu each year, the interlinked global crisis are also placing immense pressure on the local economy. Bilateral and domestic resource mobilization alone cannot avenge the impact of the global crisis. We face an enormous financing gap to solve the climate emergency while ensuring poverty reduction and sustainable development. So to close the SDG financing gap, all financial sources must contribute towards significant, rapid, and exponential scaling up of investments towards the SDGs. The reform of the international financial architecture to respond to the global challenges is therefore very crucial. Access to grant-based finance for transformational adaptation development is an ongoing effort, ongoing challenge, exacerbated by restrictive eligibility criteria for accessing development financing. In this regard, we see the proposed multidimensional vulnerability index as a welcome development. We look forward to its adoption at the General Assembly later in the year. Just like many developing countries, debt sustainability remains a priority issue for us. Debt relief or restructuring will create a necessary fiscal space to grow and focus on other priority needs. We also need to support from donor partners to access technical assistance and build capacity 
to allow for better debt, debt management and increase debt transparency. In this regard, we welcome the formation of the IMF and World Bank Sovereign Debt Roundtable as a framework for discussing options for debt resolution. Mr. President, while we acknowledge the invaluable contribution of our major development partners towards our development aspirations, reliable data has shown that aid flows to the Pacific, Pacific small island de developing countries have been declining in recent years. The decline in aid flows has had several negative consequences for Pacific small island states. For Vanuatu, this has made it more difficult to invest in essential infrastructure, such as roads, schools, and hospitals. It, uh, it has also made it more difficult to address pressing challenges, such as climate change, disaster risk reduction, and social protection and economic diversification. South-South cooperation, which is a complementary to North-South cooperation, is critically important for Vanuatu. Just like North-South like North cooperation, strengthening and expanding South South cooperation in the future will be crucial for, Van for Vanuatu to achieve its 2030 agenda. Mr. President, in 2020, Vanuatu graduated from the LDC status. The government is working actively to implement our smooth transition strategy with support from our development partners to minimize any negative impacts of graduation. The focus of our transition extends from simply mitigating the loss of existing LDC support measures to negotiating new ways of thinking about how we move forward and new ways of working with trade and development partners to achieve national development aspirations. Mr. President, as we look ahead to the future we want, we must picture a world of freedom, one that is free from predominance of colonial rule, persecution, and human rights abuses. Today, 17 Non-cell governing territories remain under the purview of the UN Special Committee on Decolonization. Accelerating the decolonization agenda is critical. It is a process that, that must be guided by the aspiration and needs of the territories on a case-by-case -case basis. Constructive dialogue is essential. The concerns of the territories are varied, and we must ensure space in this August body to have their voices heard. Mr. President, I wish to reiterate the imposition of cohesive economic measures, including unilateral sanctions against developing countries, constitute a major impediment to economic and social development and seriously hinders dialogue and understanding among countries. Such actions not only undermine the principles enshrined in the Charter of the United Nations and the international law, but also severely threaten the freedom of trade and investment. In this vein, we continue to call for the uplifting of embargo of economic embargo on the Republic of Cuba. Mr. President, today we face unprecedented and interlocking crisis. The multilateral system is under greater strain than any time since the creation of the United Nations. Effective multilateral responses are urgently needed to prevent and resolve conflicts, manage economic uncertainty, and rescue the sustainable development goals. Amidst the recent challenges posed on the UN Charter, it remains our compass. Let us work together for a better world. I thank you. I thank the chair of the delegation of Vanuatu. And I now invite.